Back in September, October of 2024, I had just three items inside my rack. I had a UDM SE, a Gen 1 24 port switch, and an NVR from another company that shall not be named. Now this has grown and expanded into a lot more. And that is a big thanks to Ubiquity for sending a lot of this gear out to me. So what I'm about to show you, I'm a bit embarrassed at the moment. So do be kind in the comments at this point and we're about to clean it up together. So we'll get it going. And we have a bit of a sad state going on here with cables running everywhere. This is what happens when generally you're chopping and changing everything, testing new gear, moving stuff around. So we're gonna tidy that up today. So this is a 6U rack that I have up here. And if we have a little look just down here, I have a new 6U rack and we have a 6U rack right here with the mounting rails that we're gonna to put together on top of this. Let's have a look at some of the stuff that we're gonna be putting together today. So we have the 6U rack that I showed you just a second ago. We have the rail kit, so we're gonna stack the 6U on top of this to make it a 12U, and that's that this tool kit right here. We have an AI port rack mount, we're gonna install that. We have an AI key rack mount, we're gonna go and install that. And we have a whole bunch of accessories. So I have things like cables, we have some uplink cables, and these are the auto uplink cables, so they go between one gig to 25 five gigabits per second. We have some brand new patch cables, so we'll go and install these. These are the enterprise version, so you'll probably see them on the side right there. That's the enterprise version of these patch cables. And we have some various accessories for the pass-throughs and the keystone jacks and also the RJ45 jack. So we're gonna transform all of this and get it looking a little bit nicer. The other item we're gonna be installing that I didn't tell you about is the Pro XG10 port. So we're gonna replace our 16 port Pro Max that we have up there and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. And we're gonna pop in this device right here. Up here at the moment, we have a UDM Pro Max, a 24 port Pro Max, a patch panel, an aggregation switch, and we have a 16 Pro Max down here we have the superlink and we have the ai port and we have our ai key just up here which is why i have the rack mounts for them so we can get them installed nicely and not have cables like this i have run a bunch of new cables which is why there is an abundance of cables down here at the moment there's some brand new cables that are going to be patched in and we're going to take a look at that also as well the first thing you want to figure out is well how are you going to lay out your rack and now it's kind of each to their own how they want to lay it out but I'm gonna quickly tell you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna move my UDM Pro Max down to the tallest rack down there, purely because my internet connection comes in down there and rather than running on cable all the way up here, we're gonna run it down there. And also we have a secondary internet connection just here that has a very long cable on it, so that can also go down as well. The other reason for that is the AI key rack mount doesn't have removable ears, so we're gonna to have to pop that in here somewhere. So we'll start by powering some stuff down. Now I'm not gonna move everything because it's not needed. So I'm gonna take my UDM Pro Max out just here we're gonna leave the 24 port that's already in there. We're not gonna be removing everything from here. We're only gonna take out what we need. And at this point right here, we're gonna power a few things down just to make sure we can move it in the right area. So we're gonna be moving the UDM Pro Max down, as I mentioned. The 24 port Pro Max is gonna come out and we're gonna put in the Pro HD. Then we're gonna move the aggregation switch to the bottom and put in the 10 port Pro XG as well. So I pretty much had to take everything out at this point. So we have one patch panel right here and we're gonna replace this one with the nice silver patch panel from Ubiquiti. So we're gonna do that one right there. We have some keystone jacks in here already. These are the pass through ones. I know how a lot of you feel about the pass through ones, but it's the one I'm using in this setup right here. Unfortunately, I don't have the Ubiquiti ones, but I will show you the ones I'm using towards the end of this video. We need to take out some of the power cables at the back there and do a bit of nice cable management in there to make it look nice and easier to work with. And then we're gonna go and start stacking this back up. So we're gonna start with a patch panel at the top, 24 port aggregation, we'll have a patch panel, we'll have the 10 port XG Pro, we'll have an aggregation switch and the AI key at the bottom. So we're making some progress. I've changed the patch panels up a little bit. I have patch panel at the top, the Pro HD, the Pro XG, another patch panel, and then my aggregation switch. And now I'm gonna pop in the cloud key. And we'll quickly open this one up together because I've not seen this one before. So we'll take this out. 
And as I mentioned, the rack mounts are not removable, so you have to make sure this won't go in the tallest rack like I was initially hoping it to do. Um, so I'm going to have to pop this straight in here like so. To get the AI key installed, we simply take this off right here and we can pop this in the front. So we can push this all the way through and you can see that sits in nicely. So we can get this mounted now. The other two have blanking plates on them, so we'll look at that in just a moment. And that's everything right here installed. So you can see the AI key at the bottom. It sits in quite nicely and finishes quite well. And we have this set up. Now we're gonna go and get the tallest rack installed down below. And then we're gonna continue coming back and patching this all up. If you've not seen this before, this is Ubiquiti's tallest rack. And, and we'll quickly put it together. It's easy and simple enough to put together. You have four pieces around the outside and the screwing mechanism is quite simple and straightforward. It's literally these little things that screw in. So the screws are almost pretty much there already. You just need to screw it in. And then once you tighten it up, you can do it just by using your hand so you don't need to worry about using any tools. And then we'll pop this one on top here and get it all screwed up. And that is the frame put together. And I actually have one already set up as I showed you earlier on in this video. The last part of it is adding these in individually, which is getting the actual tray set up so we can just hook these in. And then we can populate all six of these and we have a toolless rack ready. And there we go. This is now ready to be placed straight on here. Before we get the second one mounted, we need to release the screws from here. So by doing that, I'm just gonna undo these screws right here. And then once these are off, we can then place this on like so. We have to make sure it's aligned. There are some rubber feet at the bottom to stop it getting scratched. And then we can use the toolless accessory to make sure these are clamped together. So let's take a look at how we do that. The way this works again is just like the toolless racks. You have screws on the side and we have a clamp just here. And what happens with the clamp is it goes straight in on here. If I show you this side just here, so this goes straight in like so, and we can see the holes through here. We just need to line this all up and then we can screw it all in. So make sure it's nice and tightly clamped and then we can screw that in one and then four. So all four of those are clamped in together to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to go and finish the rest of these off and then we'll start populating the front of this. Let's start by getting everything racked that we want in there now. Now I'm going to leave my top shelf blank because I have some devices that I'm going to get a tool on the shelf uh, hopefully soon for this. So I have like my virtual machine, my little host that I have which will sit on here which runs all my virtual machines and stuff. So we'll keep that free for there. We're then going to leave a second gap because I'm hoping to get myself a WAN switch eventually. So I'm leaving space for that just here. And then we're going to have our UDM Pro Max sit right there. So in slot number four on the top one, we're going to have that sit right there. And this is literally how you get this sat in, in a tallest rack, just like that. To get it secure, there's a little screw on the side, which you'll probably see in the B-roll. Uh, that screws straight in and we tighten it up. And you do the same on both sides. You make sure it's lined up. You can feel the screw, you'll hear it click in, and then you can just tighten it up. And there we go. So that's now in there ready to go. So that's our gateway. I then have this OCD panel right here. So I'm going to open this one up. I'm going to pop this in right here because we're going to have cables that are going to be coming through uh, that are going to probably go here and to something underneath, which my switch in here. So we'll probably pop that one just in there. So again, we have the little devices just here to be able to screw it in. So we can literally just pop it in, line it up and get it screwed in. And then there we go. That's that one done. And then it's already lined up, I think. So we can just go and screw that one in. And again, there you go. That's not going anywhere, that's then fixed in there. For now, we'll populate our 24 Pro Max 
and we'll pop that one in there. So there we go, that's done. And then also inside the tools rack, you get yourself one of these as well. So we'll populate that in here. And there we go. So that's that all populated. We then have some spaces down here. So we move this around a little bit. So I've taken my UDM SE out of here and populated it straight in here. And then we have our AI port. So if you remember right at the beginning of the video, we had this sat right up there. It was just sat there, like it didn't belong anywhere. Well, we can actually put this somewhere where it belongs now. So we'll open this up. This is where the AI port sits, just up here. We have the rack nuts and screws that we need and we have the rack ears as well, but we don't need them for this. So at this point, we will get our AI port and we will populate it in one of the ports. So you can see they've all got blanking plates on the front of them and we'll go and populate it in the first one. So we take that out, we'll pop this in. There we go, that's done. And then we can stick this straight in here and then we can take this off right here. And there we go, that's the AI port done. And for this one right here, we have a UDM SE right here and I still have my 16 Pro Max that I could just probably pop in here just for now. I do have the rack mounting kit, but um, I'm gonna pop that one out there. And I know that a lot of people are probably gonna end up screaming in the comments. I'm just putting it here for the sake of this video. I don't think I will actually end up leaving it here because it's probably surplus to requirements at the moment. These were some old patch cables that I used to use, but we have the nice shiny ubiquity ones now so we can get rid of those. And that's pretty much. And then we have a nice full rack here that's set up. So. Just for the time being, just for completeness, I have, again, a couple more OCD panels. I'm just gonna populate them up here so everything gets populated. And that is fully complete. So now is the main important part. We're gonna get it all cabled up and get it all connected together. And we'll see how much of a difference this makes once we get this all finished. We're gonna get this started now. And we're gonna use the bare minimum to start with just to get going and show you what's going on. So we have our UDM Pro Max, which is powered up. We have our internet connection in, and we are connected with this. It's going all the way down and it's coming out to the NAS down here. So we're gonna power the NAS up too. And as you can see, that is also starting right there. At the moment, the UDM SE and the 16 Pro Max are gonna be for my lab stuff. So if I'm playing around with this stuff, this is gonna be right here. We have the AI key, which we are also gonna connect up. We have the 24 Pro Max. I'm gonna to wait to see, bring this into commission just yet, but we'll leave that here waiting for us as well. So now we're gonna to go to the top and get everything set up up there as well. To show you some of the accessories that we use, so we had these little tiny devices, which is just down here so you can see how that sits in the rack and allows you to push cables straight through so that's quite useful uh, if you don't want to patch it in or if it's an SFP plus cable you can go ahead and punch it straight through so that's quite useful in terms of the other accessories we have the AI port rack mount we have the patch panels and we have the OCD panels at the top this little thing up here is an SFP plus to RJ45 module so we can get this to plug this in so we can turn this into a RJ45 connection and it goes into SFP plus. So this is compatible with one, 2.5, five and 10 gig as well. Now to get the UDM Pro Max connected to my aggregation switch, we're gonna need one of these, which is an uplink cable, which I showed you right at the start, which is this right here. And this is three meters in length. So we're gonna go from here out the back all the way up and hopefully get connected up there. Now we need to do this part. So this is gonna be quite straightforward. So I've plugged in a couple of SFP plus ports from down below and I've plugged them into the aggregation switch. Now I just need to go from the aggregation switch to the two switches just here and then pop in the patch cables and we're good to go. So I'm gonna quickly do that now. And there we go right there, this is all set up. So we have the enterprise patch cables here. We have the general patch cables here. We have a couple of DAC cables coming from down below. And then we're gonna populate these two switches just here as well. And that is all done. So we have the DAC cables in now as well. These are nice and finished just there. So we have that and now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's turn these on. And you can see they are nicely powering up as well. So aggregation switch starting up, Pro Max, 
Pro XG starting up and the Pro HD starting up. So what I did mention to you earlier was I was going to take the UNAS up into here, but I realized I have dual WAN capabilities and I want the 10 gig connection as well. So I've taken an SFP plus adapter ethernet cable all the way up and joined that up there as well. So that gives me 10 gig connectivity out of my UNAS Pro. I've moved a few things around probably from earlier on in the video. So if you haven't realized this is a few days later and I've played around with this and, and set it up to how I think I'm going to need this. So UDM Pro at the top, we have the brush plate in here. We have spare patch ports in here. So if I need to boot up my 24 Pro Max, and obviously we have the RJ45 dust covers. We have the AI ports. We have the rack mount for the AI port, which I probably could have put up here, but I've left it down here for now, just purely because I'm going to need that flexibility. If we get any new hardware and I need to test it, I'm going to slot it straight into here. So I want to be able to have that capability. We have a spare keystone jacks around here. We're missing a few ports on here. So hopefully I can get some more blanking plates and just cover those up nicely, or I need some pass through, or I need some pass through keystone jacks, whatever I've decided. And then we have my UDM SE down here. So I've taken out the 16 Pro Max for the time being. And if I need to utilize that switch, I can do that right here. And just behind this right here, I have a little machine running Home Assistant which basically powers all my automation. In terms of cabling, it's not quite finished yet. So I have one of these going up to a PDU at the top. So that's being taken into there. I have this trunking on the side, which hides all my cabling. Now I need to make a little slot on the side for these cables to go through, and then I can shut this up. But those cables then pass through to the back going up. Down here, we have my ONT connected right here, and we have some ethernet cables going up too. And then just at the back on this side, on top of the rack, we have my PDU just here. We really need Ubiquiti to release a UK or European version so we can get rid of stuff like this and make sure it's all rack mounted. We have any cables going from down here to the top of the rack. If I had longer cables, I'd push them down the bottom and take them through the trunking on that side, but I don't have it. So maybe I might put a mini piece of trunking or if anybody has any ideas of the best way to make this look a little bit neater, let me know down in the comments. And obviously I don't want to tag the power cable with it because I don't want any interference. So that's going separately down that side as well. So I don't want two pieces of trunking down here. And that is everything we have set up here. So if we have a look up here, we have all the 6U racks set there, and then we have 12U worth of rack space down here. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Would you do anything different? Would you change anything? Or would you keep it set up like this? For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.